January 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 13 from the New Testament. On that day, after Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the lake, and such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat to sit while the whole crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly because the soil was not deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient root, they withered. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. The one who has ears had better listen. Then the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He replied, You have been given the opportunity to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but they have not. For whoever has will be given more, and will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. For this reason I speak to them in parables. Although they see, they do not see. And although they hear, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And concerning them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will listen carefully, yet you will never understand. You will look closely, yet will never comprehend. For the heart of this people has become dull. They are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they would not see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But your eyes are blessed because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches what was sown in his heart. This is a seed sown along the path. The seed sown on rocky ground is a person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root in himself and does not endure. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the person who hears the word, but worldly cares and the seductiveness of wealth choke the word, so it produces nothing. But as for the seed sown on good soil, this is the person who hears the word and understands. He bears fruit, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He presented them with another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a person who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants sprouted and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. So the slaves of the owner came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Then where did the weeds come from? He said, An enemy has done this. So the slaves replied, Do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, since in gathering the weeds you may uproot the wheat with them, let both grow together until the harvest. At harvest time I will tell the reapers, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, but then gathered the wheat into my barn. He gave them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest garden plant and becomes a tree so that the wild birds come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all the dough had risen. 
Jesus spoke all these things in parables to the crowds. He did not speak to them without a parable. This fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciple came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. As the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather from his kingdom everything that causes sin, as well as all the lawbreakers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. The one who has ears had better listen. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field that a person found and hid. Then because of joy he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he found a pearl of great value, he went out and sold everything he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea that caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it ashore, sat down, and put the good fish into containers and threw the bad away. It will be this way at the end of the age. Angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They replied, Yes. Then he said to them, Therefore every expert in the law who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and old. Now when Jesus finished these parables, he moved on from there. Then he came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogues. They were astonished and said, where did this man get such wisdom and miraculous powers? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother named Mary, and aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And aren't all his sisters here with us? Where did he get all this? And so they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own house. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. God, I love when you talk about the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And then that person sells everything to go buy that field or the, or the merchant who found a pearl of great value and sold everything to buy that pearl. Yet we, we don't get it the incredible treasure we have with you, or we do and then we forget about it. I know for me, I'm sort of like Peter. In a couple chapters, we're going to hear Peter say, uh, we've, we've left everything, God. Um, so what do, what do we get? <laughs> what then will we have? We don't, we don't get it. We don't get it, God. We don't get this incredibleness of everything you've sacrificed for us and everything you've given us. Our minds just don't grasp it. And in all honesty, we just go on with the commonality of our lives. You know, God, right now, I just ask for forgiveness. Sometimes I feel like I treat our relationship like I'm the two-year-old brat throwing a tantrum, demanding what I want. Actually thinking I know better than you do, God. And for this behavior, you had every right, every right in the world to punish me and discipline me. And you didn't. 
Instead, with incredible love and incredible grace and incredible patience, you slowly unveiled to me something that was so much more than what I was demanding that I get. God, I'm overwhelmed today with your love. I'm overwhelmed with what I'm capable of thinking through in my brain of what you're giving us. I'm overwhelmed that you love me so much that you don't give me what I demand. That you actually give me what is good for me and what you know that I need. You know, Pastor Don, one of the best things he ever said to me is, Janelle, you just need to get out of your own way so that God can give you everything that he wants to give you. It couldn't be more true today as I start to see this unveiling of this huge, incredible opportunity that you're showing me, God. This ministry, this mission field, this opportunity to glorify you. It's nothing I could have even imagined compared to what I was asking you for even a year ago. So today, God, I ask for forgiveness for acting like a bratty two-year-old and demanding my own way. Help me to remember today that you love me enough to not give me what I want, but to give me everything that is good for me. God, thank you. Thank you for the treasure in the in the field. Thank you for the fine pearls. Thank you for your amazing son who you sent to die for us. And thank you for the second chance that you've given me. I am not worthy, but I am grateful. Thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.